Hi, I'm Ben, the director of Encanto, and you're watching Imagine TV Network. Thank you. I think it's very important to, to give this a taste of home. And let's not forget this theatre is in Singapore um, at the Integrated Resort here in Sentosa. And we really want to make sure that we are um, developing um, as much local talent as possible. And even in my experience, you know, having, having been born here in Singapore, it was very important for me to to kind of look at that talent pool that's been generated over the last few years, and especially a, a strong push from, from the government for the arts. You look at the Singapore Arts Centre, you look at LaSalle. A lot of these very, um, very good theatre schools and production schools have opened up in Singapore and are really getting some fantastic talent through their door. Um, so, you know, from, from a director's standpoint, it's really a bit of a blessing to, to be able to have this pool available. Um, obviously, there's a way to go in, in many areas. You know, we're looking at you know, some acrobatics from, from all over the world, are really fantastic, and I think that's somewhere where, where Singapore is striving for it as well. Um, but the vocal talent is really great, and the acting talent is just developing all the time. And I think Singapore, from a cultural and from an auditioning standpoint, um, is proving to be a really exciting place. And um, as I say, finding Unshu An was an unbelievable pleasure. Um, and her, her portfolio was growing by the day, from what I understand, by her request from other people. So she's, she's doing a great job. And, and as I say, I think it's something that Singaporeans and people in the region should be very proud that they can be involved in these kind of shows and more than hold their own. I mean, they're really, uh, really quite some fantastic talent around. Inspiration from Encanto has been something that's been in our mind for, for a very long time and we really want to try and create something unique for the Singaporean, for the regional market. Really to encompass many different genres of entertainment, particularly you know, illusion and magic, as well as the destifying acrobatic skills and an incredible story which we try to interweave to, to really create a theme for the show and, and really get the audience excited and encompassed by what we're trying to present to them. The audition process for us is really one of the most exciting parts of the whole process for me because you get to see the script come to life and the personality and the performers. Um, so we were very lucky to audition pretty much all over the world. We looked in you know, America and South America, um, extensively in Europe um, and Australia as well as in Japan and in China. Um, and we were very lucky just to see the different unique techniques people have and different styles of performance. And with the real mission in this show is to try and blend that all together and I think that's what we're achieving quite nicely. So that we do have, you know, some rhythmic gymnasts from the Ukraine. We do have the high energy acrobatic performances from China um, and just some incredible dancers, as I say, from Australia, the UK. And being able to look and pull from a, you know, an incredible talent um, is really quite exciting for us because they, they, are the, they are the reason the show has soul. So we're incredibly, incredibly privileged to have a master illusionist and you know one of the best magicians in the world in, in Joe Libero. Um, and he really inhabits the sorcerer character um, throughout our production. Um, we have uh, Un Shu An, who's uh, Singaporean born and who plays the seeker. Um, the guide or jester in the show um, is Petro. He's also from the Ukraine. And he kind of leads our seeker through the story and, and in this incredible world, which is inhabited by lots of different characters. Um, and part of these characters are, are Chad O'Brien, who plays the dungeon master the arch nemesis of Joe Libera and the Sorcerer, um, as well as an incredible troupe from Ukraine um, and the UK and Australia who uh, inhabit the roles as dancers and performers in the show, who are not always as good as they imagine in our story, so we have a bit of uh, flexibility there later on, and the incredible, you know, um, Shenyang acrobatic troupe who really provides some incredibly dangerous and high energy exciting stuff for the audience. So really it's very much an ensemble um, of performers, you know, from, from really all nationalities as well as our magic crew who are also from Sweden. So very diverse and very exciting. It's quite ironic because it's a, the best and kind of worst challenge in a way because I'm very fortunate in that we've got an incredible team of performers and artists and creative team that really work on the show. So my biggest challenge is trying to just fit it all in. Um, you know, many times you're directing a show and, and you're trying to maybe fill some things in or elongate things to, to try and, you know, extend the show's running time. You're not going to come here just thinking I'm just going to see an illusion or a bit of acrobatics. And that's why we kind of try to keep the audience on the edge of their seat really for the whole 90 minutes. So you never know where it's coming from but you're definitely going to be entertained for the entire period of time. I've just been very lucky, I think, over my years in the business, being able to look at different kinds of entertainment and different kinds of acts and performers. Um, and for people who have never seen this show, I guarantee you're going to see things like you've never seen before. For example, we dubbed some crazy names for uh, magic acts and uh, acrobatic acts in the show. For example, we dubbed one thing called the Wheel of Death. 
which is uh, amazingly as true as it sounds. So it's four, uh, four pods of wheels, which we have acrobatic performers in as well. Um, and that's rotating incredibly quickly with the performers inside. Also on the top of it, they go from blindfolded to skipping to even do a reverse backflip. Um, and all this is not at ground level. This is all 12 meters in the air, directly over the audience pretty much. So it's an incredible act. We also have them performing something unique we call the belt, uh, where we have 13 of the acrobatic performers suspended um, at the top of the theater as well, about 12, 14 meters up. Um, and they perform at like a stationary trapeze, um, which is incredibly exciting and very beautiful. It's quite slow and elegant, but has a real punch at the end. Um, and the, the final acrobatic act we have is called the hoops, which involves all 20 of the acrobatic performers from Shenyang and involves them doing flips and spins and jumps to the smaller, smaller hoops, which actually rise to about four and a half meters, five meters. So if there's anyone, anyone from the NBA looking, I guarantee you these guys are quite remarkable. They can definitely jump. That's really the reason we all do this job is because creativity is a passion. I always think to do these kind of jobs, you really, in your mind and in your heart, you feel you can't do anything else because the, the emotion you get from it is just so intense because you have so many people riding on an idea and that's it at the end of the day. It's a piece of paper with writing on it, which is an idea. Um, and you have a team of maybe 300, 400 people working on this production from all different aspects, from all over the world, um, just trying to make one vision come to reality. And if you're kind of directing, you have that huge responsibility to not only showcase all their skills, but also to look after the performers, make sure that they feel good, make sure they feel confident. And from their standpoint, it's all about trust. You know, they're in a room like this with 1,600 people with no one here, you know, in rehearsals and trying to get them to understand that feeling of what it is like on opening night is what we all do. And when you kind of get to opening night and the first note of the first song starts, your heart stops for 90 minutes, me personally. And you just fall in love with every bit of performance they do because you can see every nuance, every little technical thing that's been put in and you know why it's there. And I think the audience get to see the big picture, but the great thing from our side is we get to see the little bits and pieces, just seeing how they work and develop and really just how a show matures is what it's all about because it's live theatre, it's going to be different every night, but you've still got that incredible performance and the audience is so vital into delivering that performance because the more they applaud, the more they like it, the more you get back. And I think that's always what it's going to be. So the second the curtain comes down on the opening night, it's not only relief, but it's just sure pride and, and happiness you feel for just really everyone. And, and again, doing this job is all about just creating something unique for audience members. And when you have 1,600 people applauding, an idea which you might have had years ago, I can tell you it's the best feeling in the world. Encanto is playing at the Festive Grand Theatre from November 8. And trust me, the impossible is possible, but you have to see it first.